Welcome to Next Week News, the only news channel that reports the stories a week before they happen. Now stop asking us about next month, okay? We don't know what's going on next month. We're just not there yet. Anyway, here's the news. Turns out we've all fallen for the prank of the century, which has now been revealed to the world. We actually all believed that cranberries had to be grown that way. Billionaire businessman James Cran IV, the previously mostly unknown descendant of the creator of the cranberry, is announcing his retirement next week, and in the process has also released this following statement. It has been so much fun making those gigantic lakes of floating cash every year. Countless little red reminders of my power and domain as far as the eye can see. All of it conveniently just about knee-deep and perfect for taking those little strolls through whenever I felt like it. And you all bought it. What a life I've lived. He's passing ownership of the Cranberry and all of its related business ventures down to his son, Barry who has decided to end the family's multi-generational stunt and start growing cranberries the real way. On plants, in fields. The way that things grow. We have a great new update to report from next week. Putting a spoon face up under the sink no longer makes it spray water everywhere. In fact, this is now the easiest way to achieve laminar flow. It shoots a single, gorgeous stream of water. Clear across the kitchen, yes, but it is mesmerizing. There's a new guy coming out next week who sits on your desk while you're at work. Really, it's a machine, but they made it look like a fun little guy. He's called the Bean Bugler, and you'll see why in just a little bit. What's the one thing everybody's got to have at work? Coffee. You get there in the morning all tired, so the first thing you do is you get your coffee. But it takes a while to feel it, so you have some more coffee, and then you're screwed. You've had too much coffee, and now you're all jittery for the rest of the day. That's where the Bean Bugler comes in. He watches just how much coffee you've been drinking throughout the day, and when he knows you've had the perfect amount, he blasts his bugle really loud. That way you spill the rest of it all over. This renders it completely undrinkable. That way you can't even be tempted to take another sip. For the rest of the workday, your mind will be crystal clear, and you'll be so efficient. It is incredible just how accurate he is. However, if you drink hot coffee, you may want to invest in the Bean Blower, which is his brother who blows a steady stream of air just above lap level, which cools down the coffee just before it hits you. Starting next week, you'll be able to challenge various accidents and oopsies. So if you dropped something or spilled something and you really didn't need that, you can now have them take another look. Now we should note that this is less about the physics of it, and more so about whether it was deserved in the context of everything else you've got going on right now. And who knows, maybe they'll overturn the call, or at least let you know that you didn't need that. Because validation is at the root of what we're looking for most of the time, with most things, anyway. Isn't it? Next week, we're starting to be a lot more mindful of the everyday derivatives that we don't often think about. And there are some that we do, like how fast your car can go from 0 to 60, that's one that we think about. But people will ask you about the temperature. Are you comfortable with the temperature? But they'll never ask you if you're comfortable with the rate at which the temperature is changing. And I've been trying to be a lot more mindful of things like that recently and really fiddle with my thermostat a lot more often. And I don't know if you've ever taken your living room from 60 to 80 as fast as possible. But it turns out the underbelly of my fairly bad apartment is an absolute beast, and I never would have known. I'd like to get it certified, if there were only some governing body for something like that. It's time to announce the nominees for the first annual Next Week News Little Miscreant of the Year. This award is given to this year's most mischievous, conniving little freak, and here are your three finalists. First up, we've got Gunther. Gunther was a rat from Germany who snuck into a Munich cheese manufacturing facility and not only ate the entire batch of an experimental new cheese, but he also then went on to gnaw through the hard drive of the computer that stored the instructions to make it, functionally erasing this cheese from existence. This award would be presented posthumously. Our second nominee is Dumpster Dave. Dumpster Dave is a former Chicago Sanitation Department driver who managed to bring all the trash he collected during his five-month tenure back to his home three hours outside the city. No one had ever done that before, and after a mistrial, he was able to keep it all for himself. And third, we have The Gargler. 
The gargler is an alleged serial burglar who has broken into possibly hundreds of homes, but has never taken anything more than quick gargles of water from the bathroom tap. Their identity remains unknown, so the award would remain on hold until it's determined. The winner of Little Miscreen of the Year will be decided by a combination of committee and audience voting. So let us know who you think deserves the award, and stay tuned for the announcement of the winner next week.